Uh, you know, it's crazy because this really is a bit of a silent killer. Air pollution, we don't think about it because we can't see it, but there's different types of air pollution. There's obviously particulate matter, which are the teeny tiny particles that can linger in the air. Um, and those can be very hazardous because when you inhale, you're essentially getting a big dose of that particulate matter deep into the alveoli of the lungs. Uh, you're also getting it obviously in your eyes, in your nose, in your throat, all the other mucous membranes that are exposed to these particulate matters, and that can cause a problem. But there's also other types of air pollution as well, the gases and the liquids and such that can be in the air, the ozone, um, the sulfur dioxide, the carbon monoxide, uh, the nitrogen, uh, the lead, all the other types of things that can cause all kinds of immune activation and other downstream physiologic effects. And in terms of the health benefits, you know, excuse me, in terms of the health risks, they're really like short-term and long-term health risks. And, and it's difficult to study this because a lot of these studies are association, not causation. Obviously, you can't randomize people to getting air pollution or not getting air pollution. And so you really have to look at patterns, epidemiologic patterns over time. And there are substantial health risks that have been associated with exposure to all these different types of air pollution. So, you know, in the short term, if you think about what's exposed, it's your eyes, your nose, your throat and your lungs. That's really where you get a lot of inflammation. So you can get irritation of the eyes. You can get a runny nose. You can get a scratchy throat and then you can get a cough, shortness of breath, trouble breathing even systemic symptoms such as headache and fatigue when you start to have a lot of nonspecific immune activation. And in the long term, there's a lot of compelling data that's coming out actually from studies of firefighters who have been exposed to air pollution over time uh, in a chronic fashion that shows that, of course, you can trigger risk for heart attacks and strokes within just a few short days or weeks of exposure, but you can also affect your longevity uh, how long your lifespan is. You can inc increase your risk for certain types of cancers. And of course, cardiovascular disease is the big one that really does get triggered by this type of pollution. You know, the studies across the board, and these are association, not causation studies, because they're observational, not randomized data, really do suggest multiple health risk, particularly cardiovascular risks associated with air pollution. And, and, you know, in the short term, like I said, a few days or weeks of exposure can lead to an increased risk of heart attack and stroke. And the mechanism of thought of this is thought to be multifactorial. So, you know, inflammation is one that I alluded to. So obviously when you have that particulate matter or any kind of inhalation of a toxin, it can trigger systemic inflammation, which can increase your risk of plaque rupture and atherothrombosis. You can also get activation of platelets that can occur as a result of this exposure. You can get endothelial dysfunction, and that's where you can have both short-term and long-term effects from the endothelial dysfunction, because you're, you know, you're more likely to have some sort of disrupted plaque morphology in the short term, but in the long term, you can actually have more athero atherosclerosis developing over time due to chronic endothelial dysfunction and inflammation. And there's even emerging data, of course, that it can change our autonomic nervous system. So exposure to these types of you know, small particles can change the modulation of our autonomic nervous system. It can increase our sympathetic drive over time. And that is thought to be a mechanism as well by which this may be associated with a higher cardiovascular risk. We know that people who live in, in areas of the world where there's a lot of air pollution have a higher risk of cardiovascular death and they have a higher risk of all the adverse major cardiovascular events. So this is really something we in the cardiology community really wanna raise awareness of increased education around. You know, it's interesting that you asked that because global warming has had so many different impacts on the climate that people really do believe that that is one of the reasons that we're seeing so many more wildfires, so much more smoke, so much more, you know, uh, abnormal patterns, whether it's with respect to temperature or it's respect to precipitation. So climate change can really significantly affect our exposure by creating these natural phenomena, such as more wildfires. It can also change, obviously, the composition in the air. If you have a different you know, temperature, a different uh, humidity, a different amount of precipitation, it can change the composition of these particulate matters and some of these other pollutants that live in, inside the air. 
But interestingly enough, climate change has also been implicated in indoor air pollution as well. So it's not just what's going on outside, but also what's going on inside your home. You can have more mold and dust mites and bacteria and all these other things as climate change related precipitation changes. Obviously, allergy season has been thought to be changed as well as a result of many of these climate change patterns. So even your exposure to pollens and allergens in the air during different seasons can potentially change as well. So yes, I do believe that climate change has played a role in just how much of this you know, wildfire phenomena we're seeing and the impacts that it has downstream on air pollution, both outdoors and indoors. You know, it's not just the patients with heart disease, it's the lung disease, it's the pregnant women, it's the kids as well. You know, uh, it's the older patients, anyone who's older, even if they're healthy, because older patients have less lung reserve. And for kids, there's actually data that if you, you know, get exposed to air pollution when the lungs are developing as an infant or even as a toddler, as a young child, it can increase your risk of developing asthma or other chronic lung disease down, downstream, even if you didn't have it when you were exposed. So I really think everyone needs to pay attention, even the healthy people, but in particular, those with underlying cardiovascular disease or lung disease, pregnant women, older patients or, or kids, those with comorbidities, really need to pay attention. So the biggest thing we can do is prevention which is to limit the dose of the air pollutants that we're getting. And the best way to, to limit that dose is to limit your time outdoors when the air quality is poor. So one of the first things I do every morning is actually look, listen to the meteorologist, look at the weather, of course, but also listen about the air quality index and when it's going to be the worst and when it's going to be the best, because then you can kind of plan your outdoor time around that. Now, if you absolutely have to spend time outdoors, there are measures you can take to protect yourself as well, such as wearing a mask like an N95 or N100 that filters out a lot of those particulate matters. Now, keep in mind, it's not gonna be 100%. It's not gonna filter out everything, um, but it does work to actually reduce the amount of exposure that you have. Now, the simple surgical masks don't do the same thing. They don't work nearly as well to limit that exposure. So you really want a high quality mask that fits well and has filtration capacity if you're going to be outdoors. If you're going to be indoors, you want to keep those windows closed. You want to make sure you're riding in your car with the windows closed. If you have the AC on, you want to make sure it's not in training outside air. And you want to try to maybe get a HEPA filter or an air purifier. HEPA filters are ones that are particularly good at getting rid of some of that particulate matter and designating a clean room. You know, maybe it can be the baby's room or your bedroom or what have you in the house where you've got that filter running all day long to really help purify some of that air that you're being exposed to. I often tell people also, and they don't realize this, that you don't wanna be exercising outdoors either when the air quality is poor, because you're thinking, thinking about what you do when you exercise, you take in a big dose of air, you're taking it in more frequently because you're breathing heavier and faster, uh, and you're obviously requiring more oxygen because you're you know, exercising. So all of those factors put together increase the dose of exposure that you can have. And we know that limiting the dose is one of the most important things that you could do when that air quality is really bad. So try to employ all of these measures and really do pay attention to this. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not a threat. And it's not just a threat to how we feel, but it's actually a threat to our longevity and our heart and our lungs. So just make sure you pay attention to those air quality alerts and keep yourself safe.